What happens to our vitamin C gene? Vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid, was discovered by Albert von Sandjorgi in the 1920s. He learned that this type of small carbohydrate molecule was able to cure scurvy, a type of disease caused by malnutrition that is fatal if left untreated. Today, vitamin C has become a commonly used drug in society. Vitamin C is also an important dietary component for animals, but surprisingly, many other animals like most fish, some birds, primates, and even bats are unable to synthesize it on their own, whereas our common pets like cats and dogs can synthesize this vitamin. So what happened? All these animals, including humans, actually have all the genes present to synthesize the vitamin. Why don't they just do it? The biosynthetic pathway is the manufacturing process flow of complex proteins. In each process, an enzyme is involved to catalyze the reaction that converts a substrate into a product. Every product of the previous reaction becomes the substrate of the next reaction or process. These processes run in successions to eventually create the final product. Albert Leninger, a famous biochemist, was beginning to understand that human cells are unable to process L-galunolactone into ascorbic acid, which is the crucial final step of vitamin C biosynthesis. Later on, Nishikimi and his co-workers discovered that humans actually have the gene that codes for galunolactone oxidase, GULO, which is the enzyme that catalyzes L-galunolactone into vitamin C. But it has been inactive due to an accumulated number of mutations and has since been existed as a pseudogene. Pseudogenes are genomic DNA sequences similar to normal genes but are non-functional. So how can this type of inborn genetic flaw that prohibits us from something so crucial for survival be formed through the course of time? With a living proof of the higher chance of survival and reproduction of the individuals that carry the seemingly harmful mutation in the gene. But how? Here, we will discuss three theories that can explain what consequences that may happen from the loss of this important gene. A scientist, Halliwell, in 2001, pointed out that one of the products of the reaction is hydrogen peroxide, which is a type of reactive oxygen species, or ROS. ROS is most commonly known to cause serious diseases like cancer. Therefore, our body not yielding vitamin C also means that it is not giving rise to extra ROS. A study conducted by Knowles revealed the role of vitamin C in regulating the transcription factor hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha, HIF-1-alpha. HIF-1-alpha gets destabilized under the excess of vitamin C, leading to a proteosomal degradation. In the absence of vitamin C, HIF-1-alpha is stabilized, which will then serve as an activator of a variety of stress-related genes. Based on this knowledge, later researchers, Grano and de Tullio, suggested that no longer having the vitamin C biosynthesis has an advantage, and that is, we will be able to control the activation of HIF-1-alpha. We all know that pseudogenes play a role in epigenetic control of gene expressions. Can the pseudogene of vitamin C enzyme possibly be playing a silent yet vital role in our bodies? What do you think? To learn more about genetics and epigenetics, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.